Ollie Hubbard became director of Taylor University Theater in 1976. During his time at Taylor, he would impact over 25 years of students. Ollie was an amazing man. He had this way of reaching into people's lives, not boisterously, not even obviously sometimes, but in a more subtle manner. I was directing a production of Glass Menagerie, and it was time for Ollie to come in and observe my work. And I was sort of anxiously awaiting some sort of response from him, or um, at least to get some feel for if I was d doing it right, you know. Um, and I was working with the actors. We were uh, had been there for a couple of hours, I'm sure. And Ollie got up and walked to the row behind me um, and leaned over into my ear. And he said, you know, you really have a director's eye. And he left. It was a moment in time in which I began to believe that I was more than I thought I was. I actually thought to myself a few times when I would walk into his offices that it looked like something out of Dead Poets Society. It was like the professor that you always wished you would have, but you never thought you would because he only existed as Robin Williams in a movie, but that was actually what Dr. Holly Hubbard was like. Ollie was very good at connecting on a very personal level with students. Uh, to me, Ollie was your friend as well as a mentor and a leader. Ollie inspired me in many, many ways. Uh, his cluttered office was very, very fun to visit. Oh, that's the original building that we started in over Sickler, isn't it? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Sickler Hall. That was my office right back there. Often I took tours with parents and prospective students, and if Ollie was in his office, I'd always knock and have him open the door for him to meet the parents and all, because he made a great impression. This office was just an unbelievable pile of all kind of his interests. I mean, it's everything from Greek uh, statues, you know, on to modern art. It was an amazing thing. We went there and cried about chemistry, and we went there <laughs> and said, I don't think I can do this whatever it was, and he would very calmly listen and listen. One thing I remember about Ali was the twinkle in his eye when he was getting ready to say something. Kind of a, a smirk that wasn't a mocking smirk, but I mean, there were, there were ideas going on there. Uh, you know, he just put his head to the side and you know, he'd, he'd touch his beard every once in a while and he'd look at you in the eye. And, and then begin to speak and in 15 words, say far more than I had just said in 15 minutes. And everything was wonderful with life again. <laughs> Tracy Manning is now the director of Taylor University Theater. I'm gonna see Annie and Kate on page 24 and 25. I'm gonna see Keller, Kate, and Annie. In the spring of 2014, Taylor Theater is doing a production of The Miracle Worker. It is the story of a little blind and deaf girl whose life is transformed when a teacher invests in her life. What will you teach her first? Helen's mother asks, says Annie. First, last, and in between, language. Underneath that story is this sort of story of like this reservoir of a life-giving spirit that no one has dug deep enough or reached far enough into to find. The Miracle Worker has special significance for Ollie Hubbard, it was the last play he directed before he passed away in 2004. Well, you know, at that, at that time, you just don't, I had no idea it was the last play that we would ever work on together. Um, you know, looking back on it today, um, I think it takes on some new significance for sure. Um, if you look at um, Annie's role and how she worked um, with Helen, and I think about how Ollie worked in my life, and um, the things that he brought out of me, and the chances that he gave me, and it was not just me, he touched um, hundreds of people. And he called us all together in a meeting in August, and brought us together to tell us that he had cancer. He read a, a passage, it was kind of a devotional type book he read to us that day, and I thought, who has that kind of class? that can come in and tell you he's dying and read this to you to encourage you and to hug you and dry your tears when he's the one dying. I mean, who does that? Uh, Ollie understood that his life was uh, scripted by God himself. 
I expressed at the funeral that his life was like a script, and I guess I chose that language simply because theater people use a script, and you're trying to be honest to the author. If you can do the play, then do the, do the script as it's written. And uh, Ollie was very anxious to play the script called Life in the way God wrote it for him. When the communication faculty returned to classes the fall after Ollie passed away, they found gifts that he had made preparations to give them. I do remember that in September, when we started classes, all of us got a, a little vase with some dried flowers, and I, I still have mine, uh, and a note. <laughs> I think probably everybody would say to you that what they remember most is his notes. I would sometimes get uh, notes in campus mail um, encouraging me or commenting on something I had done that he appreciated, uh, even though he was in the office right next to mine. But you just treasured it. You'd, I'd keep it on my uh, desk for months, right? Holly Hubbard. So many of the plays that we explore and that we do well, they're all ab about this sort of sense of what it means to be human. And so often what it means to be human is to experience pain. We're born into sorrow. We're born into pain. We're born broken. Um, and, and it's that love, it's that redemptive love that, that heals us. So Ali did that in humble and quiet ways he loved on behalf of Jesus Christ. In the weeks before and after Ollie's death, letters from friends started coming in, thanking him for the difference his love had made in their lives. One such letter was from student Jason Francis, who says, I hug you around the neck, tell you thank you as I hold you for a sec. Then, pulling back, I look you in the eye and say, I love you, Ollie. Always have, always will. Jason Francis also died of cancer in 2010. But the effects of Ollie's life are rippling into the next generation. And I'd been thinking about him because I'd just been reading stories to my children and I'd summoned up all of my oral interp and dramatic skills, learned in his acting classes and his oral interp classes, and wondered if he knew that the impact he was having on me would spill over to the next generation and would have an impact on my kids as well. I have come to know him and to try to integrate what he taught me in the classroom and on stage uh, here at the theater. So follow me. I have the privilege of working with some of the greatest kids here in Flagstaff, Arizona, and we just wanted to say one thing. All these shaped my life. Always the, the, the hour or a couple of hours before a show was makeup and costumes and getting ready for performance. And usually it's a room pretty alive with energy. Um, and Ollie would come and he would put us all in a circle and get that little half grin on his face and the twinkle in his eye and usually make some comment about all of us bouncing off the walls. And then he would pray with us. I sit in his chair every opening night, the chair that he sat in, and I, I count that just such a privilege, a spot I never dreamed I would sit in, and he was willing to challenge and provoke and do whatever necessary so that that deep well of who I was as a person could be tapped into. Annie does it for Helen, Helen does it for Annie, Ollie did it for me. I hope I do it for somebody. Mm -hmm.